Welcome to the next episode in the Understanding Crypto series. Uh, today I'm going to talk about finding a job in the blockchain and cryptocurrency industry. Uh, just a reminder, these slides are created by Thomas Plunkett. The materials are not investment advice or legal advice and they're for educational purposes only. So crypto projects have a tons of funding right now. Uh, because of the increase in crypto prices over the last year and a half, a lot of projects have way more money than they were expecting to have. And so the they're, they're expanding. They're spending that money on growing. Um, if you look at a crypto project, they are probably hiring. Um, in fact, most of these crypto projects have more job openings than they list on their website uh, because they're so busy trying to get caught up that they can't really list the, the listings as fast as they happen. Um, so something to keep in mind is you don't need to have a PhD in cryptography in order to get one of these jobs. Leverage your current skill set and try and find the right position for yourself in the crypto industry. So I'm gonna dive in and talk about my advice uh, based on a, a combination of just general uh, job advice as well as specific advice focused on blockchain and cryptocurrency jobs. So before I uh, dive into blockchain and cryptocurrency jobs, you know, I just mentioned it's hot. Well, Gartner has a hype cycle they use to track hot technologies. And the basic idea is when some new technology is in, in, introduced like Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or any other blockchain or cryptocurrency project uh, or any non-cryptocurrency project for that matter, um, the amount of hype around that technology goes through a curve that looks sort of like this. That is, there's a technology trigger point and you know, as time passes, and time is on the x-axis, visibility is on the y-axis, as time passes, uh, that project gets rapidly visible until we hit the point where we'll, uh, what Gartner calls the peak of inflated expectations. At this point, people think the technology is magic. It can you know, solve world peace and, and uh, end cancer. Um, you know, and, but then people realize that, you know, that technology is just a technology, you can't solve all those things. And their expectations drop down to hit this point here that Gartner calls a trial disillusionment. Then over time, people realize, hey, this technology is good for certain things. And so we go up the slope of enlightenment until at a certain point, the technology is really well understood. And at that point, we're just basically on this plateau of productivity. And I've seen a lot of technologies go through this hype cycle. Now, Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrency technologies uh, might be individually going through this cycle. So Bitcoin and Ethereum might be at different points on this cycle. Um, they also, you, you might look at different aspects within that. You know, Bitcoin wallets might be uh, in a different place than the peer-to-peer -peer protocol itself. So just keep that in mind that the hype cycle, you know, you might apply it to specific features within an overall system. All right, so there have been a lot of hot technologies over the last 25 years. This lecture is going to be about how to find a job in a blockchain and cryptocurrency space. But if you think back over the last 25 years, there's been lots of hot technologies. Whether we're talking about the World Wide Web in the mid 90s, Java on the uh, you know as the very first uh, dynamic content that could operate on the World Wide Web, uh, search engines, service-oriented architecture, mobile apps, social apps, cloud, big data. Now, computer security and AI have been around for a long, long time, but they're also getting really hot these days. And then, of course, quantum computing is coming in and being hot. And quantum has some aspects that will impact blockchain and cryptocurrency, since quantum computing is going to impact cryptography, and of course, blockchain and cryptocurrency rely on cryptography. Um, so I believe that there's three types of organizations and teams. There's organizations that are growing in the number of employees. That is, they're hiring uh, employees, they're acquiring other organizations and so on. There's organizations that are shrinking, you know, people are leaving and not being replaced, layoffs and so on. And there's organizations that are staying roughly the same size, although there might be a lot of turnover and changes, new people join and old people leave. But the overall organization size stays the same. Now, it's my belief that fun is achieved from being in a growing organization or working with a hot technology like blockchain and cryptocurrency. And that the maximum amount of fun is obtained when doing both. That is, you're working at a growing organization and you're working with a hot technology. As I mentioned earlier, just about all the blockchain organizations these days are in fact growing and they're all dealing with hot tech. So I think the maximum fun is when you're actually working with blockchain and cryptocurrency. Now, something to keep in mind, 
uh, I put in parentheses the, the letters D-I-N-G after fun to represent the fact that I think funding also goes along with it. You know, you get a lot of funding if you're, if you're working in a growing organization or you're working with hot tech. And when you're doing both, then you're gonna get the maximum amount of funding for what you're doing. So this is a great time to be uh, working in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space uh, because they're, everyone's growing and it's a hot tech. All right, so one thing to keep in mind, and this applies to um, the entire computer industry or information technology industry, not just blockchain and cryptocurrency, but communication is really important. Talking with others, speaking, writing, listening, it's really important. You know, sometimes I hear people say information technology equals people plus process plus technology. Well, of those three people in process and technology, people are the most important component. So effective communication is your most important computer skill. Um, now, you don't need to be on a social network like Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, but you do need to be able to contact people when necessary. So let's talk about finding a position a little more detail. The first thing is, is not to have a preconceived notion of who will hire you or what they're going to want. Um, you don't know who needs your skills, so talk to everyone. And when applying for jobs, it's okay to submit applications online or to a recruiter, but you should attempt to find out who the hiring manager is and communicate directly with that hiring manager. And I'll give you a couple examples of uh, these points. Uh, the first one is not on having a preconceived notion of who's going to hire you. Um, about a dozen years ago, I got a call from a recruiter from a company that really surprised me. Now, I knew that this company uh, had job positions for people with my skill set. However, this company had recently gone through two acquisitions where they had acquired a lot of people with my skill set. And they had originally had some people with my skill set. So I figured they had three times as many people with my skill set as they needed. Um, so I was surprised that they were calling me. Um, but it turns out that the original people they had left when those acquisitions happened. And the, the acquired people from the acquisitions um, also left immediately to go off and do uh, new startups. So instead of having three times as many people as they needed, they had uh, lots and lots of work and they had nobody to do it. And so that's why they're calling me. So again, don't have preconceived notions of who's going to hire you. Talk to everybody. Somebody out there is going to need your skill set. The second thing is, is that... Um, you know, don't just send uh, applications online, on job sites or to recruiters. Try and talk to a real person who's doing work um, because that way you can find out what the work's really like and if you're really interested in it. And it's also a better way to be hired. And I'll give you an example on that point. Um, about almost 20 years ago, I wanted to move out to Silicon Valley. I was living in the East Coast at the time. And... Uh, I applied to a position out in Silicon Valley that was perfect for me. Um, I, I look, went through all the requirements. I met all the requirements, um, sent in my resume to the recruiter, never heard back. About three years later, I saw the same job was being advertised again by the same organization. And you know, maybe, you know, I said to myself, huh, they're, they're advertising that again. Uh, maybe they lost funding and never hired the person and now they're hiring them. Or maybe they hired someone and it didn't work out. Or maybe they got lots of work and they need more people than the person they hired. Well, for whatever reason, they're hiring again. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm still perfect. I'm three years more perfect than I was then. But this time, you know, I sent it to a recruiter last time. It didn't work. So I'm not sending it to the recruiter this time. And instead, what I did was I looked up the people who worked for that organization online. Uh, I found someone who went to the same university that I went to. And so I contacted that person directly and said, hey, this is my background. Does your organization have a position that's a good fit for me? Um, now, this particular person I had never met before. Uh, we went to the same university, but not during the same year. So we wouldn't have ever met on campus. Um, I got an email back within an hour of sending that email. Because again, I was sending it to a direct person. I wasn't sending it to, you know, uh, some recruiter who's got 500 emails sitting in their inbox. So I, I got a, a response back from that person. I contacted within an hour. Um, I had a 
phone call later that day. Um, and then I did a job interview within a week out in Silicon Valley. So, and they made me a job offer. So, you know, talking to a real person, you get past the bureaucracy of the recruiter, you get immediately to someone who knows whether or not you're a good fit for that job. And that actually brings, raises another point I want to raise, which is that a lot of times the recruiter that's filling out a requisition and they're putting out an advertisement on the internet for a job position, they are describing their best understanding of what the hiring manager is asking for, but they're not the hiring manager. And there may be stuff that they put in that job ad that the hiring manager doesn't care about. Similarly, there may be stuff the hiring manager cares about that they did not put into the job description. So again, if you can somehow bypass the recruiting and talk directly to the hiring manager, you'll get a much better understanding of whether you're a good fit for that job or not. So, I hear a lot of people saying they want to move into the blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, space, but they don't have any experience. They can't put, you know, I, I have five years of experience with crypto on their resume. Well, technical certifications can be a substitute for experience. Put the classes you've taken, put the certifications you've taken. Um, you know, if you've done any hobbies in the space, put all that stuff in because that can show experience. And if you're interested in working with a technology like crypto technologies, a technical certification is a cheap, a cheap investment compared to how much you may end up getting paid to work with that technology. You know, you know, typically a certification exam costs somewhere in the hundreds of dollars, whereas you might get, you know, if you were put put in several years in a career, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars as a return on investment. Um, and nowadays, there are many out online websites that can help you prepare to pass a certification exam. There's all sorts of online videos, online study, uh, prep questions, you name it. Uh, in many cases, available for free online. Um, so definitely consider getting obtaining technical certifications if you're worried about showing experience for a particular type of job. Now let's talk about another place you can get valuable experience. You can volunteer for a nonprofit or an open source project. If you can't find a full-time position doing what you want, find a part-time or a volunteer position doing what you want. That part-time or volunteer position can turn into a full-time position at a different organization or at the same one. And if it's a cryptocurrency organization you're helping out, they may give you cryptocurrency in exchange for uh, the work you're doing. Um, and just about every nonprofit organization and every open source project out there needs help. They will not turn down your help. And involvement with an open source organization oftentimes leads to full-time paid positions with an organization that is supporting that technology. For example, almost all of the early volunteers that helped with Linux were later hired by Red Hat or other companies that supported Linux. So you can get a lot of valuable experience working on open source projects. And almost all of the crypto projects that are out there are in fact open source projects that you can work on. Let's talk about resumes. Um, generally speaking, you should use a one page resume. Uh, recruiters don't spend very much time on resumes. It's, uh, you know, your average recruiter probably spends five seconds to 10 seconds looking at a resume before making a decision. So if you have multiple pages, then that's, you know, maybe one second on page two and one second on page three. So don't even bother putting a page two or a page three. Just put everything on a one page and put the most important information at the top of the page because they may never read down past the top of the page. Uh, so you want to reorganize the information based on the job you're applying for. Um, you know, again, putting the most important information for that job at the top. You should put networking information in the resume. You know, what schools you went to, what other companies you worked for, social or volunteer organizations you're, you're involved with, all the ways that people might know you or have uh, things they might have in common with you. Um, tasks and job duties should also be listed, but they're not as important as the networking aspects. Um, especially if it's a job that you had some time ago. Uh, at that point, yeah, the tasks and job duties really don't matter anymore, but the networking aspects might still matter. So let's talk about interviewing. Um, 
you know, my primary recommendation is, you know, dress for success, be positive and optimistic, ask questions about the interviewer's job and the company. You know, nowadays, um, I recommend that you write down some questions ahead of time. That way, um, you know, if you your mind draws a blank, you can just refer to one of these questions you wrote down ahead of time. Um, and your questions should be open ended. They shouldn't have obvious answers or answers on the uh, interviewer's website. So instead of asking if a company has, for example, a cloud service, ask them how their cloud service is different from their comp competitors, which is much harder to find out from a website. Um, and also it'll be open ended. it'll take them a while to answer it. And talk about things you have in common with the interviewer, build a relationship, make the interviewer believe you're engaged and interested in what the interviewer's company is doing. And realistically, um, you really should only interview companies that you're engaged and interested in anyways. And so you're, you're just making the interviewer believe what you truly believe. So rejections happen to everyone and they happen for reasons out of your control. Uh, you know, maybe um, the company lost the budget. Maybe um, they already hired someone before they interviewed you. Yeah, who knows why they didn't hire you? Don't worry about it and keep on uh, applying. You know, just like that time I mentioned, I applied for a position in Silicon Valley and never heard back. And a couple of years later, I applied again. And that time they gave me a job offer. Um, so don't worry about rejections. Just keep on applying. Uh, a little comment on corporate culture. You know, I heard this phrase that people join companies but quit managers. Companies have cultures, but individual positions will vary dramatically in an organization. One position may be perfect for you and another position might be horrible. Uh, don't rule out a company just because one position is not a good fit, but look for another place at that company that it would be a good fit. Uh, so let's talk about demonstrating blockchain and cryptocurrency experience. So again, um, you might, first off, you know, organizations, if they're going to hire, they're looking at you as a total package. So all your skills are relevant, even if they're not crypto skills. So don't worry about uh, whether or not you don't have a lot of crypto skills. Focus on showing your best skills. Um, but in addition to it, there's a lot of ways you can actually demonstrate some crypto skills, even if you don't have a current job position in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. You know, you can do presentations on blockchain topics at conferences or YouTube or other video sharing sites. You can write articles, blog posts, put on Medium, uh, write articles or books. You know, um, you can volunteer for open source software projects, as I mentioned earlier obtain technical certifications. You can do all sorts of things. You can create NFTs, uh, create your own fungible token. Be creative you know, to demonstrate a blockchain and crypto experience. Uh, I didn't miss it on this uh, particular slide, but hackathons are also a great place to um, learn more about the blockchain space, as well as give you the opportunity to be creative and create things. So I highly recommend hackathons. Um, and uh, these hackathons, some of them will give you prizes as well, or just give away free cryptocurrency. Um, so be creative, show your interest, your passion, your excitement, and you too will be able to find a, a job position in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. So I want to thank everyone for watching this video uh, in the Understanding Crypto series and tune in next time for our next video.